as I mentioned before, uh, like with my whole screw up, I want to I want to revisit topics I've already talked about, and that's being past games with the really bad audio that I did in the beginning. But now my audio is decent. Hopefully, I just clipped. Oh well, I'm gonna talk about Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I don't want to talk about some of the first games again, like Kingdom Hearts One and Two, but I'm re I'm replaying them again slowly, slowly. Like I'm start, I've already like almost at, not at the end. I'm all, in my first visit for Hollow Bastion in the first game, and I'm doing it on proud mode. Oh my god, that's so fucking hard, and I hate it. And I and I for some reason did the like the questions in the beginning was like how fast do you want your level like beginning fast middle point or like takes a while until halfway through or whatever i did the one where you like it gets easier halfway there and i'm already level 45 and i'm like five more levels and everything will become easier but then i'm like Ugh, it's hard everything one shots me it gets annoying real 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 fast i'm saying that now but oh well i'm still having fun <laughs> but i'm gonna talk about kingdom hearts 3 the best one in the series no far down it like fight me on this and i like i really love kingdom hearts 3 like it's also, it's also, it's almost, it's almost the first anniversary, like, I played through Kingdom Hearts, by the way, like, I mean the entire series, by the way, as well. Like, I think it was around March, I beat Kingdom Hearts 1, like, the beginning of the quarantine, and after being the game, I went, I did everything, I played through Kingdom Hearts 2, watched all the cuts in for 358 over 2, and then coded, and then Breath by Sleep, and then Dream Drop Distance, I just played through all of them, and it was amazing, I love Kingdom Hearts, even though I'm recently new at it, as well. And I'm starting from the beginning again. I'm gonna play through a little, all the games to do it. Not 100%, but mostly everything. But the only game I've done that was with Kingdom Hearts 3, and now I'm doing through my Kingdom Hearts 1 playthrough final mix on proud mode. So far, it's so hard. I wanna do all the bosses. I wanna do Kurt Ziza, Phantom, which I'm fucking scared, should not scared, worry shit, that's gonna be super duper hard. Hopefully, I've managed to get to level 99. Because I did choose the option that makes it hard to level up in the beginning, but it becomes really easy after middle point. So that's hopefully it's gonna work out. Five more levels, but that takes ages. But I'm gonna talk about Kingdom Hearts 3, the best one in the series, like I mentioned, because it's so fucking good. I love all the games, don't get me wrong, okay, except for reaching a memory watch. I do wanna play, which I'm thinking I'm gonna do it, but I don't know, I'm gonna take my time with it. But Kingdom Hearts 3 as a whole is just so full of life. It's such a good game. Everything about it feels like. I mentioned it's like, I feel like Square Enix is the only game company. Okay, I guess Nintendo, I don't know about them. <laughs> but like Square Enix, compared to Atlas at least, they know that stuff needs to change to keep up with it. They should never do the same thing, you know? And Kingdom Hearts 2 is like, they take the good stuff about the past games, it just makes it better. Sure, it's overly easy, even on proud mode. <laughs> but critical mode fucking fixes that, and I played through critical mode, and it's great. Everything about Kingdom Hearts 3 is great. The characters, the story, the new Disney worlds, the returning Disney worlds, which is not a lot, but like playing through Olympus again and not doing the arena. I don't think the arena is that good, by the way. I feel like it's just filler for the most part, not that fun. But having it as a full world with Thebes in the beginning, which I want to say Thebes, but I guess that's wrong. But Thebes in the beginning, all that crap is just so, so fun. But I'm going to start off with the... Now I'm going to go through everything, like the music. It's great. The rendition of Dearly Beloved. Amazing. It's one of my favorite renditions along with Birth by Sleep rendition of Dearly Beloved. It's great. Like the original Birth by Sleep and Kingdom Hearts 3, they're the best version of the songs, far none. But the game's main theme, it has two, Face My Fears and Don't Think Twice. Face My Fear, I remember first, like when the game first came out, like the opening was revealed. I remember watching it and listening to it and I'm like, doesn't sound like good in my opinion. Wow, that clipped hard. I don't think that's like good. I think it's actually quite bad because like, I don't know what the hell was wrong with me. But after playing through all the games and actually liking real music and watching the cutscene for the first time, the opening, I cried a lot. So Face My Fear makes me cry. <laughs> and Don't Think Twice is an amazing theme, ending theme as well. It's just so good. Makes me cry. <laughs> and the orchestrated version of Don't Think Twice is one of my favorite renditions. I think all the orchestration of the main theme, like with passion, and simple and clean, hikari or whatever you call it in Japanese. They're all really well. And Face My Fear has the orchestrated version, which only played through the concert, and it was written in the soundtrack, which I want to buy, but oh my god, is it expensive. <laughs> but there's a lot of tracks in it, almost nine hours long, like ten hours long, I think. But anyway, it's all really good. And so like, when you first start off, the, actually, there's this point zero point two where you play as Ogwin in the beginning, which is apparently supposed to be like a fucking prologue of the game. But like, I don't... Like, I can see that, I guess, but like, still. 
The bay and the warfare were Olympus, the theme. Uh, Mount Olympus, I think it's simply called, or burning, yeah, Mount Olympus, like, not a lot of, you re I really, that. <laughs> like, the fan titles for some of the tracks sounds better than the official track, and then you look at past games, official track, and you're like, okay, it's not any difference. <laughs> but anyway, the, the, all the music in the games is really good, it, returning tracks as well, they're really good, but Mount Olympus as a whole, was just so fun actually having... Olympus is a full-fledged world, it's amazing, Hercules as well, having... Looking at these Disney characters in this in, in 3D graphics look like they're movie ca Okay, I'm not gonna say that because I've never watched most of the Disney movies, movies by the way. I think I did as a kid a long time ago, but I barely remember any of them. But they look so good, but then I remember the first fight, boss fight in the game. Like the end of the world boss fight where you fight the, all the giants, the titans I mean. I was so scared because like, oh my god, look at that HP bar, because in past games it was like, only one bar, and then in Kingdom Hearts 2 it was like, oh, you have like one bar, and then you have two little ones, and then in this game it's like five already, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, but like, they're designed like that, and they're really fun, most of the fights, if you, even on critical mode, they're really fucking fun, not on with pro codes, I do not like pro codes, I tried going through easy mode with pro code, and I managed up until toy box boss fight, last fight, but that, I just could not do it, it was not fun. <laughs> Also, Heroes Fanfare is a really, really good track. And then you have, like, the new, and, like, I think, like, Takeru, uh, Takeharu Ishimoto did really good. All the composer for this game, Yoko Shinomura, even to, to Yoshi Sekito, they bring their A games. And then there's, like, extra four other composers, I think. Like, I, I don't, I know one of them was from Final Fantasy XV as well, but I cannot remember their names. And I'm not gonna focus on it. Anyway, gummy missions in this game afterwards as well. They're really, really fucking fun as well. <laughs> and when you go to Twilight Town again, massive fucking glow up from, from Kingdom Hearts 2. It's like, holy crap. And the redition of the afternoon streets and working together makes me cry. It's feel, it fills me with so much joy and happiness that I just like, I can never get enough. Also, then all the tracks, Skies of, uh, Sky of Wonder, is like, it's the theme that plays when you're like selecting the worlds so from before doing the gummy ships mission. I that one is one of my favorite alongside with Breath by Sleep. Breath by Sleep and Kingdom Hearts 3 are like my favorite games in the series, I think. Like I'm ripping through all the games now to make a solid conclusion, but like I like Breath by Sleep a lot <laughs> and Kingdom Hearts 3. And then and the first real quote unquote world, I guess most people will go through was Toy Box. Finally having a Pixar movie fits so perfectly, by the way, in Kingdom Hearts. And the first one being Toy Box was great. And Toy Story was a movie I fucking seen actually. Only the first two, by the way. I don't know what happened after three. After two, I mean. But anyway, I did not have to know that. But like, it's really, really fun. I like everything about it. Like being a to Sora, Toys, and Goofy and Donald's design as toys, they're really good. And like, thank God you got a friend with me is not is not another bibbity bobbity boo. <laughs> Because, like, I love this rendition of You Got a Friend in Me. And Toy Box Jam is a really good fight theme as well. Like, speaking of bibbidi bobbidi boo I remember playing through Birds by Sleep for the first time. I think it was with Terra Story. I was playing through that, I don't know, Cinderella world. And I'm like, okay, I wonder what's going on. Oh, the music is pretty good. And then my sister, who was sitting on the couch next to me, she was like, it's bibbidi bobbidi boo And I'm like, what? And then I can, now it just got annoying and I couldn't handle it. <laughs> But since you got a better friend of me is a better track, it's like, it's okay, I like it. And I remember when I was playing through Kingdom Hearts 3, sometimes I let the title screen go and do my own shit, like make coffee or something. And then my mom was like, yo, this track, the music in the title screen is really fucking good, especially compared to the other game. And I'm like, what other game? And I'm like, oh yeah, it's Bloodborne. I can't blame her for that. <laughs> I love Bloodborne's title thing, by the way. I think it's really good. And then another thing I love about Toy Box Jam is the mini game. Like each world has mini game. I'm not talking about Plantastic, the Seven Plants, which I absolutely love. By the way, I love their themes as well. The Plantastic theme is so good. But each world seems to have its own mini game. And for Toy Box, it's this weird mecha beat them up. And there's a new rendition of Trading Dark Clouds. I love that rendition so much. It's so good. There's so many remixes as well, like the Corrupted, one of my favorite battle themes from Kingdom Hearts 2. There's like two different versions of it used in this game and it's so good, especially... Or is it just one? I don't remember. I think I'm getting confused with Tension Rising, which is also a really good theme as well. The Angelic Ember is also like really, really fun. I love her design and everything. 
And oh, another fight thing, like the King of Toys, he gets his own unique battle theme. I think it's called Skyward Striker. And for me, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out if it's a remix or not, because like, I only played through most of the game once. So even if it's some Lemotif, I don't realize that until later on, until someone pinches it out. And then the next world, one being based on Tangle, which was another movie I watched halfway through. I have no idea what happens in the end, but the game spoiled it to me, so I'm almost okay with that. But the theme, Happy Hair Day, brings me so much joy. I love the xylophone in that song. It's like, it's so nice. And then you have Swinging Free, having, uh, what's her name, Rapunzel and Eugene, I forgot his fake name, Richard, I think, I don't know. Having them as a party member. Also, you have uh, Woody and, what's his name? Woody and that rocket ship guy. Oh, well, they're having team members all from Disney movies and not having to use, and not have to putting away Donald and Goofy was such a massive goodly change. It was amazing and he like, thank God for that. Also the rendition of Rowdy Rumble used in this version in this in this world is really good. This mini game, uh, the one with dancing, I don't like, I love the music on it. I thought the mini game was adorable. The different re reactions Sora does with his environment and with the people he's dancing with is so cute. Like, Sora in this game is adorable. I love him. <laughs> Even Donald and Goofy get good character action in this game. It's fucking weird. <laughs> and I think it's the first time you hear Anger Unchained. It's used for Mother Gothel. Also, Mother Gothel is a piece of ass. Holy crap, out of all the Disney villain, why does she look the most fuckable? Answer me that. <laughs> Anyways, the first time you hear Un Anger Unchained, it's such a good track, by the way. It fits the moment perfectly. And 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 the heartless design in this game, like the bosses as well, they're really, 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 really good, man. <laughs> and another, oh yeah, speaking of, like the next world. I think you go through the different section now. Anyway, before that, going through the gummy missions again. The boss, one of the boss team, Lock, Load, and Blast is one of my favorite tracks in this game. I love everything about it. And I thought it was composed by Yoko Shimomori, but no, it was actually done by Tsuyoshi Sekido. That guy always impresses me. He also did Majestic Winds in Dream Drop Distance, one of the best fight team in video game. The next world is most likely Monstropolis. I mean, Monster Inc. world. I love everything. It's another, it's another movie I've seen as well, so it made it so much better. I remember watching it like the DVD I had as a kid, and I used to watch it with my sister. So fun, but everything about Mastropolis is so great. The fact that it's another continuation story, like with Toy Story, like its own unique thing. I love it, and the theme Mastropolis now and Monster Smash again, amazing tracks. It's so cool. An interaction with the organization Venitas and with Sully. Absolutely hilarious. Out of all the game, this is the game that made me laugh the most, like out loud laughing as well. And the rendition of Unforgettable as well is one of my favorite rendition of that song. I did like, I think I still prefer Breath by Sleep version of it because the violin is more noticeable in that version, but this version used in the game was so good. And the rendition of Enter the Darkness again is so good. Also, it's the fact that the organization member actually get the personality shown, even if it's for a little bit, compared to the Kingdom Hearts 2 counterpart. So much better, especially Demix is the best example of it. I feel like his character is going to be shown much, much more later on with the next game of this year, but only time would tell. But like everyone gets, like each organization member, everyone gets a little bit of time of day to get like the appreciation, except for Kyrie. She got fucking massively shoehorned in this game, but like, oh well, Remind sort of fixed it that, I guess. Also, the Winnie the World in this game, I love the implication, like even after a long time, you might forget some of your friends and they might not consider you as friend and you might not consider them as friend. But if you simply talk every once in a while, you can rekindle that friendship again. I, I love that message and I really appreciate that message as well. It's so cute. And this time the mini games are actually kind of fun to remind me of mobile gaming, like those games you only play for like three minutes and then never touch it again for a couple of weeks. So I was okay with, but I was so annoyed where I had to collect, like, I, it, Kingdom Hearts 3 is the game I, I also planned them in. I'm only missing one, by the way, and that's to get the pro codes, but that's gonna take a while. And the addition of Bounce Around is one of my favorite as well. And it's, and it's good. Like, it's short as well, and it's sort of contained in its all area in the afternoon and Twilight Town, but seeing Merlin again was cool. And we also have Frozen now. 
Ariandel, Arendelle, I think it's called. I'm not, I can never pronounce it. I was so surprised how fucking fun the world is. I thought it would be annoying, but nope, it's really, really fun. The music, Frozen Wonderland and Miracle on Ice, great tracks as well. I love the interaction Sor Sora and D uh, Donald have in this world. It's so funny. <laughs> and the fact that the Square Enix flexes, the fact that they can do Let It Go, that was just amazing. <laughs> And it was, and again, I haven't watched Frozen actually, so hearing Let It Go was such a trip because like, I never realized it until I played the game, like, oh yeah, I've never actually listened to Let It Go, so like, hmm, it's good. I want to watch the movie now, but again, I guess that's the point of the Kingdom Hearts game, to make you watch the Disney movies, but the thing is, I don't have Disney Plus where I'm from, so it's like, ah, oh, you suck yourself over, Disney. <laughs> In this game's minigame as well, the Weird Slide one is my least favorite one, it's not bad, like Kingdom Hearts 1 bad minigames. I was like, this is not fun at all. <laughs> and then the, my favorite world in the game, like, is it my absolute favorite? I love this. Toy Box and then the final world, the Keep Like Graveyard. But, like, the Pirates of the Caribbean world was one of my favorite. The fact that they made it, like, <laughs> that could, this could have been its own little game, by the way. It's so adorable. The ships, everything about it is so fucking fun. <laughs> Like, the exploration pack uh, factor for, like, is so much better than the one they used in Kingdom Hearts 2. Like, this pirate ship as a whole is great. And the fact that the pirate world, like, all its tracks, a pirate's avenger, flags of fury, pirate's freedom, winds of it, all of them, done by Take Takeharu Shimoda. And the fact that they don't use the Pirates of the Caribbean main theme like they use in the movies, the, the fact that they decided to make the, its own specific track is so cool in my opinion. The fact that the game got shafted in Melody of Memories soundtrack, that kind of made me sound like, oh, I... Also, the fact that you fight Davy Jones was so cool. And then the last world is the Big Hero 6 world. I can never pronounce it. Sans... 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 Sokio, I think. I never watched the movie, by the way, so there was a lot of story points I didn't realize. The only thing I fucking managed to connect was the fact that Ta Takeshi's brother died, but other than that, I was like, uh... But the, main, the, the rendition of the encounter, by the way, a really good track. But and again, Takeharu Ishimoto does a really good track, like AR argument, R, R, argument, argumented rhythm, Robot Overdrive. I love the track. In this game's world mini game, the Flash Treasure, one of my favorite ones. It's just like, it's fun, and, and I'm surprised how fun that game is. It's only two stages long, but it's like, it's fun. Also, by the way, Kingdom Hearts 3 is better than Persona 5. Another track I love about this game in the Big Heroes world was Zero Hour The Rescue. I love the piano in this track and then I'm, and I was surprised that again it's like, oh hey, it's done by Tsuyoshi, Tsuyoshi Sekida and I'm like, that guy just impresses me. I never realized it's, it's his until I have to Google it, but it's so good. All the music in this game is just phenomenal as a whole. And say it with me better than Persona 5. But after doing all the, like, during the game, there is some moments where they mention other characters as well. Like, with Big Hero 6, you also have, like, Riku, Dark Riku, what, what it was later revealed to be Replica Riku. Replica Riku. And the fact that he cares about Namine still is like, oh, that's good characteristic overall. I also, like, scene in Frozen World was so cool. Oh, and then you have Luke Sword. I think that's how you pronounce him. I don't know, the game always surprises me with the way they pronounce their game, their names, by the way, but like, Luxor was great in the Caribbean world, and then you have, uh, oh yeah, Benitez and Monstropoli was also good, and then you have, I'm trying to remember his name, what was it again? I just had it in the tip of my tongue. Marluxia, again, in the, fro in the Tangle world was also a really good connection, I love that. Also, like, each of them gets their own time to shine, except for Vexen and... Demix, where they get shafted, and the fact that they fucking say it as well. Also, Vexen, my favorite organization member, he got his time to shine, and it was great. I love it. And what's the one? Also, Zigbar, fuck me, that twist in the end completely catches me off guard because I never realized, like, oh, what's Lucio's real identity? It never crossed my mind until the ending part, and I'm like, what? Oh, but characters that did really did get shafted other than Kairi was definitely Pate and Maleficent. Like, they show a little bit there and then a little bit of that, and that scene is like, oh, that was kind of sad, but like, hey, they seem, they seem no more as setting them up for something with the box, but I have no idea, so that's fun to see. And then you also have young Xehanort in Toy Box, that's the one I was talking about. It's so cool, the fact that he's there just to see, experimenting on to see how to get Xion back, which I love, by the way. It's like, that's how you connect the story together, better than in Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> 
But after doing all the Disney World, you do all the original crap. Like in, like I mentioned before, like there's moments where you're like, oh yeah, this is Rocks, it's Axel, remember Shions and Kairi, which made me sad. Everything about this game is sad. And like, oh yeah, there's Aqua, Quell, also Ventus as well as there. Like you mentioned them a little bit. And then the game also mentioned like the new Princesses of a Seven Heart, which is like a massive fucking setup for the next game. I love that. But after doing all the Disney World, it's like original character time. And then you go rescue Aqua. God, Xehanort Aqua was so sad. And the fact that Disney laid... Let Nomura write the fact that, oh yeah, Aqua got abandoned by Mickey fucking Mouse and she's like, you abandoned me. And I'm like, damn girl, that's so true, you deserve to be mad. And then once you do rescue her and then, oh yeah, before rescuing her, Sora and Ryugo have their game moment with, like this sword from Dream Drop Distance. I love that, I scream. Like after, I squeal so hard a lot of the games. And literally, Kingdom Hearts 3 was like the moment sometimes I had to let my control down and let my emotions settle to continue, it's insane. And oh yeah, when you rescue Aqua and she's in Destiny Island, she's like, oh, this world fallen into darkness yet again. And then she starts crying when she realizes it isn't. Oh, it made me cry. And then they hug. But before that, Aqua sees uh, Terra and Ventus, but it's actually Riku and Sora. That made me sad. <laughs> and then you have Aqua being an absolute badass against Venetus before waking up Ventus. And then it's like, she got shafted because Venetus will prove too strong. But then you're like, oh yeah. Aqua can still kick someone's ass even though she's been in the world of darkness for such a long time. <laughs> like, it was great. And then Ventus wakes up, and then they have the little moment outside of the mysterious tower that was adorable. And then, uh, but before that, when Aqua's like, good morning, Ben, and then Ventus like, good morning, Aqua's like, <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> And then you have that one scene where Axel gets to know it, that's like, oh my god, there's so many of us, it's so hard to get memorized. And then you have the fucking buck from Pinocchio. What's his name again? I don't know. He's a character that's awfully forgotten. But then he's like, oh yeah, there's the got me phone. Google it, shit lord. And he's like, it's so fucking true. And then you visit the graveyard, Keyblade graveyard, and everyone fucking dies. And Sora has a breakdown. And I have a breakdown. And then you go to the final world, which is such a fucking massive trip, but Stranded Beyond, it's a great track. <laughs> and after that, you have to go through, like, the dive into the heart thing with everyone. And it's cool. You visit, you revisit all the world, like, akin to Kingdom Hearts 1, where you have to re see all the worlds that was taken over by darkness. That was kind of cool. And then you defeat the Demon of Tower yet again. And then you have Union Cross having everyone's Keyblade. It's fucking cool. The song Rise of the Re Rise of the Union makes me cry. And then you go actually go through Keyblade Graveyard and you have to fight groups of the bosses and then you keep going. I like how they're all designed in the way like once you defeat one of them, it becomes easier like with Merlusha, Larkseen, and Luxor. The, one, the minute you defeat one of them, the other two simply fall. The same with Young Zan, uh, Replic Reclu, and Zigbar. And each of their cutscenes, once you defeat them, is so well made. They're all really, really good. Like the one with Larxene being still secretive as a bitch is great. I love it. And then again, you have Zigbar Psycho. Like, oh, you think he disappeared like everyone else, but JK, it was a, it was a ruse. I got fucking bamboozled by him so many times. You won't believe it. But then you have. Uh, what the hell was the name again? Uh, oh yeah, my Lucia's death screen, not death screen, recompletion skin. That was just sad and it was cool. But then Replic Riku, and then he's like, such tragic irony. It's like, if Riku's like, oh yeah, we can still recomplete you and nominate, they can do that, I'm pretty sure. But then it's like, eh, nah, I don't want to live in the world with another you. So it's like, he pieced out, like, gave nominate the body, and I was like, that's just cool. Rico gay side just went away. <laughs> oh yeah, and I think people. Oh yeah, the fucking lingering will cut team with fucking Terra Zen. Oh, that was cool. And fucking Donald Dog Zeta Flare came out of nowhere, but fuck me, was it cool? <laughs> and then you get the main two <laughs> emotional seeds <laughs> with the Wayfinder Zero and the Days team, and it's like <laughs> they're both so well done. They're so well executed. It's insane, I guess. Which one's my favorite one? It's hard because I love both of them. Like, the one with. Oh, wow, that cuts in. First of all, when you defeat Vinita, I guess I'm gonna go with the birth, birth by Sleep crew. The way when you defeat Vinitas. And then I really wish they kept Vinitas alive. I mentioned this in the original podcast, but like, 
Vinita's could have been the perfect character that showed like even though someone is steeped in darkness, that doesn't necessarily mean the darkness is a bad thing, it's a natural part of life. But then it's like, yeah, no, I'm leaving you guys. I'm like, mm, your character was cool, but could have been handled better. But still. As event is being but hard, like, okay, good. just accept the fact that he's dark. But then you have fucking Terra. That scene where Terranord still like Terra uh, Xehanort is still in his body, and then he just chains up Aqua and Ventus, and then puppets it around like fucking toys on string was so fucking gruesome, and it was heartbreaking. But the music, the fact that it starts with the study up, and then it, and then it goes to Terra's theme, that was just so good. And then you have the Guardian behind him breaking free, and it's like. Oh my god, it's so good. And then you have them crying and hugging, and that makes it even so much better. And like the fact that they show the characters crying, first of all, was just amazing. It's like, holy crap, you will not see a Winster game do it. The only time they fucking show characters crying is like when someone dies, and they think, like, oh, the only acceptable time is someone dies. But nope, being reunion with your close ones again, that kid, that's a good and ass reason to make you cry. And then you have the Days team. Again, really sad. First of all, you fight. Shion and even Isa gets his character like Saiyax, I guess. Saiyax, he, he got his moment for, before dying. But that scene where fucking Shion hits uh, Sora so much and, and Sora's like, it's okay now. And then you hear Roxas' voice saying, Shion's like, yep, just breaks me so much. And the fact, like, I think it's only, it's in Shoyan Remind as well how Saiyax is trying, purposely trying to connect. Give Shion the connection so her memories can return to her. That's again lies, nice detail in the story aspect. Great. And then you have Shion, Sora, and Roxas being the fuck out of Saiyax was great yet again. <laughs> and then afterwards, uh, Axel and Saiyax have their moments again. They like these like none of them die, which is so great because they have so many other media where the character fucking dies, and people are like, I wish to stay there, but I'm not glad that. This isn't the case. The only one that do state that is fucking Erika's and Xehanort, I realized. Also, Replic Weeklu. Anyway, they hug it out. I cried. The minute they show Xion crying, I was like, yep, I got me as well because I love that scene so much because, like, the story, like, the, the story fucking, it says you right then and there. Like, you don't need, like, them saying, I've missed you guys so much. Her crying really just says everything that happened to her. You know the reason why she's crying, and then you know why everyone else is crying. And I'm like, so good and then the theme hearts as one is officially track it's amazing but the fact that the soundtrack is still missing some themes like by the way like there's a five minute cut scene of the all the sequence that goes on with the day's team but that's for some reason cut into a two and a half minute one it's like what the hell and then you get the last fight in the keep Lake graveyard and you have like young xehanort ansem and xemnas that's just amazing froza finale it's just a great ass track everything about it is so cool H. And again, it's perfectly designed as well. Like the minute you defeat one, they all fall like domino and it's great. And the scene with Ansem afterwards, like I love Ansem, the Seeker of Darkness. I love his character. Like after he's been defeated, he's not butthurt or anything. It's like, go seek your answer. And I'm like, you're a cool dude. You're still one of the sexy pieces of ass. Abnes was okay. It's like, oh, you feel emotion? It's loneliness. Well, that's just sad to you, I guess. And then you have Young Zerner being an absolute dick, which I can appreciate the balance. And then you go to Skyla at Kylan because Kyrie fucking dies. I forgot about her, by the way. Anyway, you go to Skyla at Kylan. I love the theme edge of existence, even though you hear like for like five seconds, and then you have the replicas coming out of nowhere, scaring the fuck out of me. And then they turn the, the sky red, black, and then you have these weird symbols. I'm like, I'm not scared at all, but they're fucking see that easy because for some reason they all share the same health bar. So like one thunder and they're dead. Like shot locks in this game are fucking broken, especially the ultimate keyblade one. <laughs> But I do like you can see the Daybreaker town underneath that. I have no idea what the implication is. I am trying to keep up with the mobile game, smartphone game story, but there's so much that goes on to it, not gonna lie. And the final boss thing. There's like three of them. Replicas, Critical Crossroad, and Dark Domination. I love Dark Domination as well. People seem to don't like it. I don't know why. I think it's a great final boss thing. And Xehanort as a whole. I love the keyplay design, by the way, the final keyplay. I think it's cool. But anyway, everything about it, the fact that it's with you and uh, with Sora, Donald, and Goofy, it's like, that's how you end it, like, in the first game. And the fact that it shows, like, oh my god, Sora fell, he's dead. And then you have Donald and Goofy call out his name. I cry, because they're a really good friendship. They have such good stories. Like, it's insane how good their friendship is, and it bugs the hell out of me. <laughs> because it's so good, it's well written. And you have the final scene. 
cried so hard <laughs> because I thought Ericus was dead. I did not expect him to come, but he was in Terra's heart. I cried so much because like, finally the Wayfinder trio have their last moment with Eric as they huck it out. Eric is regretting his decision as well. I was like, that's so sad. But then him and uh, him and Xehanort accepting fate. Like, fuck me, Xehanort defeated. He thought he could keep going, but Eric is like, dude, this is just pathetic. And I was like, yeah, I guess so. I think they both died. That's just insane. It was so sad. And then you have Kyrie still gone, and then Sora's like, I'm gonna fucking find her. And Mega's mouth is like, no. And then Simple and Clean plays. And then I cried. And you see everyone living happy. I was like, oh, hey, they're nominee. And then you fucking have Don't Think Twice play. I cried so hard. And then Sora disappears. I cried even harder because I had no idea what the hell happened. Oh, God. So good. And then you have the weird fucking epilogue scene. Like, I try to remember, like, I think it's with Masters of Masters as well. Like, who the fuck is he? Do we, like, is it an original character? Or is it someone we know? People say it's Demix, but still, I have no idea. It's so much crossbar. Then you have your Zora. But then you do the Remind DLC, which explains everything. I love the Remind DLC. Everything about it was so cool. It makes me cry even harder. <laughs> and then you play as Parable Kyrie as well, which was just fun. Like, her moveset was great, but then you can play as Roxas and Aqua and then Riku. Then you play them before. It's still fun playing them again. But after you did the Remind scenario, then you actually have less explorable Skylight at Kylum. Again, it was really fun. But then you get to the limit card where you can fight the 13 Daedalus again. They're really good. Also, by the way, the Caverns of Remembers remake is really fucking good. To see, I forgot his name again. Sekiro did a great job either way. <laughs> Even though for some reason it didn't fucking play the Radiant Garden. For some reason the test check doesn't have this Radiant Garden rendition. It's weird. Even though it's short, I still liked it. Anyway, all the fights are really fucking hard, but they're really fucking fun. Like the hardest one for me was definitely Syax. I knew that because I did not like his Berserk thing, but I managed to beat him. Berlusha one is also one of my favorite. I remember doing it with my mother, uh, playing it, and my mother was there. She's like, oh yeah, the music sounds like James Bond. And I'm like, I guess it does. That's a bit of one of the moments. Another rendition I really like was the 13 Struggles for like scene. I love the moment, but also like the look sword version because they, all of them have their own unique fight theme. Like it's a remake says, but they're really, really, really made done. And then you have Xeon's fight theme, Rectors of the Heaven. This rendition is so good. I did not like the Zen or the Master Zen or its fighting though. I thought it was okay. Also, fuck me, that Mickey Mouse scene where he, where he defeats the replicas in the Key of the Brave. A great fucking track, by the way. I cried. Literally, I will listen to the soundtrack. I walk down the street and then you see me start crying because of the music is so good. And then you have Yozora. Yozora. Oh my god. I, I, the minute I beat him, I screamed so hard and my sister was like, you have damage. And I'm like, oh, I don't care. It's so good. And it really makes me excited, like after playing through Kingdom Hearts 3, even though I was satisfied to the point where I beat the game on normal, critical mode, on proud mode, I had, I got the ultima, I had to fucking get the ultima twice by the way, because I like, the only way I could have done the 13 data battle was doing ultima weapon, because like, <laughs> it's hard, by the way. I didn't think everything about Kingdom Hearts 3 I love because it's a natural progression of the series as a whole. I love all the games like I mentioned, but like Kingdom Hearts 3 since it's the most modern one, hell, it just did its two year anniversary just a couple of days ago. As a whole, it's like, this is how video games should be, they should always try something new and Kingdom Hearts 3 does it perfectly and I am excited to see where this series is headed to. But like, I did the good thing ever, but like, I, I remember the game came out, I was interested in playing it, but then I realized I will appreciate the game much, much more if I play through the original games first and the story so far package is like a great fucking price by the way and it's like I, I'm glad I did that because I appreciate the story so much better I do want to play like I did I did I the Kingdom Hearts 3 is the game I play the most obviously and for some reason the game only has nine save files it confuses me because all the other games for the PS4 they have 99 I'm like oh well it's annoying but everything about it also the fucking a cooking minigame was so fun. <laughs> Stupidly fun. Everything about Kingdom Hearts 3 is great. Better than Persona 5. 